first cursor came along, right? And yeah. cursor was really great because at the time AI was good for making like small changes in your code and you had to kind of know where you were pointing it. You had to really know what you were doing. Claude code came around mm -hmm. um, and really it was like, oh my God, all of a sudden I can kick off these tasks and they might take 10, 20. I had them go like past 30 minutes. So this is Crystal. It is built around Claude code. Um, the reason that I chose Claude Code is because I feel pretty confidently that it's the best agent on the market right now. And with their max plan, um, it's easily the most cost effective, um, especially if you're going to use a tool like Crystal to really um, burn through those tokens and get a lot of use out of your agents. Um, it was the natural choice. And really what Crystal is, is a tool to manage um, a swarm of agents. So what I've done here is I've kicked off, I've said... Um, make a snake game in Electron. Um, you know, classic game Snake. Anyone with a, a Nokia phone in the uh, 90s will remember. Um, now, I've already done this. And what I did is I actually kicked off three sessions of it, um, which means that I've run three attempts at it in parallel. So what we have here is I can see all of the Claude code output. Um, I can continue the conversation if I want it to if I want to make some changes, um, and you can see here, I've asked it to make a .git ignore file, and I can even go and look at the diff. So I can go and I can say, hey, here's everything that it did in these commits. I can look at them all together or individually, um, and I can even go and if I would like, I can say, yeah, the game is over, and I can go and commit that change um, right there. Uh, I also have a full file editor. So for files that weren't changed too, if I want to go and inspect it, um, I can look at all of those. And if you're a VS Code user, this should look very familiar to you. It uses the same open source library for the file editor. I can go and look in the terminal if I need it and look at the files there. Um, and it's right in this Git workspace directory. Um, oh, so I should also say this when it runs, it's putting each of these prompts in an isolated Git work tree. Um, now, a Git work, tray, work tree is a lightweight way to make a totally isolated copy of your code. So it can do these changes. Um, they're in a different folder. And then you can decide, do I want to bring them back to main or do I want to throw it away um, and have these parallel agents going at once um, and just keep it organized. What this has changed my workflow into is almost like a, a brute force um, attack on my code with agents, where I will let the agents make multiple attempts, um, and then I'll just go through and review them and kind of cherry pick the best one. So I've got this button here. I'm going to run it, and boom, I've got a snake game. I'm going to start it. I'm going to play it. Cool. It works. So I'm going to close that. I'm going to say, all right, I'm happy now. Um, I am going to rebase this and merge it back to my main branch. Um, so it makes a commit between each prompt that I give it, um, which is nice because sometimes I continue the conversation and I say, oh, I wish I hadn't done that. And I can go back and I can revert the commit here. So now when I'm ready to go back to main, I'm going to rebase it and squash, which means I'm going to turn it all into one commit message. Um, I'm going to say initial commit, squash and rebase, and now it's here back in main. So I give the ability to work on the main branch, um, but I don't recommend it. But I'll just show you here that um, it's back on the main branch. And now if I wanted to build on it, I could say, do something like say, improve the graphics. Um, and maybe I want to turn on ultra think mode that's going to tell Claude code to use the maximum thinking token limit. Um, I'm actually going to turn that off for now for demo purposes so that it runs faster. Um, I'm going to say let's do kick off three sessions. Um, the name here for these sessions gets auto generated if you provide it with an API key. But I'm going to kick that off. And these will run. And maybe while I'm waiting for that, I could say, oh, at the same time, um, add power-ups to the game. Kick off two of those, and now I have those running here. 
So now, as soon as one of these finishes, now I'm going and I'm starting to review. And by the time I'm done reviewing it, by the time I'm done testing it, okay, now these are done. And maybe like the next thing I set up here to increment, like that's done. Um, I can star the one that I like out of these. So if I test the three of these and I decide, okay, this is the one that I'm going to keep moving forward with, I can give a star there just to mark it. Um, I can also work with multiple projects at a time, um, which is great for me because as I, I mentioned to you, uh, this is actually a side project. Um, Stravu is the, the main product that I'm working on right now. So I work on both Crystal and Stravu at the same time, but I'm going to say, uh, you know, let's make a, a Tetris game. I'm just going to put it in the temp directory for now, but I can add a project and now I can say Tetris, you know, and kick that off. And now I'm working on two projects simultaneously. Um, so the whole idea is just keep yourself busy um, in the age of agentic uh, coding. Um, I love the interface where you can have multiple projects and then within each project, you can have different agents. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's been a real, um, real productivity boost for me. It is now my like primary development environment for both Crystal itself and for my main project. So this would work with obviously any stack, but you are, I guess you're testing it mainly with like um, React applications, Next applications. Um, yeah, it should work with any stack. So like, for example, um, I'm using on our project that has a Python backend, TypeScript front end. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's stack agnostic. It works with your existing project. It works with your existing stack. And you can go in to be able to run them here. So all that is, is I've put in a run command um, for this project. I did an electron NPM start starts it. Um, I can put a build script too. If, for example, I wanted to run a build before it even starts the AI. Um, and that's useful for projects where you need to build it before the AI would be able to like run your unit tests, for instance. Um, but then the run commands, I put npm start, and that's what allows me to do this. So we'll we'll test like, you know, this improved graphics um, branch here. I can run that script that's just npm start, and I can say, okay, how are these graphics? Cool, they look a little bit better. It gave the snake a face. I really love doing this for like front end or visual changes um, because I just personally have no sense of like of how to do do a good job on front end. So sometimes I just brute force my way through it and just rapidly go between them to test, review changes, see if everything's good and bring it back to main. I think the most impressive thing is how quickly you made that. From what I saw in your Git history, you made it in like two weeks. Um, yeah, about that, like two or three weeks. And once I was able to use it to build more features in Crystal, the, the velocity just increased. Um, and you know, I've only been doing this part time. It's a side project. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I'd like to keep working on it, but yeah, yeah I was able to, to kind of spin this up and get it to where it was and then using crystal on it even faster. Do you, do you foresee, um, a possible future where agents are not just working in parallel, but they're also, um, this, the agent might also decide when to fork, how many times to fork, and also when to merge? So the thing about agents is that they're always, they're always going to do work that's kind of limited by the, the specificity of your prompt, right? So for example, in this, I said, just all I said was improve the graphics. I didn't give it anything more specific than that. I just wanted to come and go and like see what it came up with. Um, and I think that we're eventually going to move to a future where the line between product manager and engineer blurs quite a bit. Um, and one of the, the key skills that will differentiate like the best engineers are, are they able to, do they have good taste? Um, are they able to like look at this and decide, you know, what's going to be better for the end user? Um, and in that sense, I think that agents will take over, you know, they'll have more and more autonomy, but I think we're still going to want this general pattern where there's some amount of isolation and I can go and I can say like, this looks good, this doesn't look as good um, and decide what we're going to, they, they might be doing merges and stuff locally. Yes. Um, I think like, you know, pushing to production, um, at least for now is gonna be on the human. At the rate that AI increases, uh, you never know.